Thank you. I want to welcome everyone to our October 8th meeting. Please note, uh, we have uh, Mr. De La Garza and Ms. Scott absent this evening. But we do have enough counsel here to conduct our business. First uh, item on our agenda is items from counsel. I have a couple of things. things. Um, Elise? Yes, sir. Uh, in light of what happened in Bloomington, I want to ask that we review and look at the ordinances on the school crossings and the uh, signs that say end of school zone. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the corner of Lova, I mean of Del Mar and Lone Tree. I went by there a while ago and the signs do not extend past the, the intersection. Yet if you go down to Lova and Lone Tree, the signs are there. Um, I had a constituent called and said that in the mornings he stands there because his grandson has to go to Torres. And the cars sometimes don't stop and it's very dangerous there. I know we had asked for a light there several years ago and we did a study and y'all said it didn't warrant it. Y'all put in the stop signs with the blinking lights, but that doesn't seem to be enough. So if there's any way that we could extend the signs to cover that intersection, you have a lot of children that are crossing to go both to Torres and to O'Connor. So if we could take a look at that, and maybe not just that school, uh, just kind of look at the other elementary schools, because I think that might be something we need to kind of look at, okay? And I know we are looking at, because I talked to the same person as did uh, Public Works, uh, okay. Roland Rodriguez did. So we're yes. looking at that whole area. Uh, and I've also asked the police department to, he, he told me the times that he felt like the speeding and right. it was the worst. So we've asked the police department to also increase patrols in those areas. So okay. yes, and we are doing a review over there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Put that under items for council whenever y'all next meeting. Yes. And, I mean, when we have a result. Just yes. map. I would just ask to add to it sure. a map to showing where okay. things are. Maps sure. always help me put sure. those kind of things in right. perspective. Right. So. Okay. Council, anything else? Any other items? Seeing none, we'll close items from council. Citizens communication is open for anyone who'd like to come forward and speak now. And add as a courtesy, your name and address for the record, and a courtesy, try to limit it to five minutes. My name is Mark Lofgren. I live at 116 Wilshire, <clears throat> Victoria, Texas. Um, I'd like to piggyback on what um, Ms. Solis said. Um, I think you should look at sidewalks, too. The mayor's brought up um, by Chandler School and you go across the street from Guy Grant, from Salem to Mockingbird, the kids walk along a fence because they can't walk along the road because there's no sidewalks. You should look at sidewalks too. There's a lot of schools that don't have sidewalks. The little, the poor kid that was killed, there was no sidewalks where he was walking. Um, Howell School, the, the uh, school zone doesn't include Mockingbird, and Sam Houston, it goes up to it. It includes Lurie Lane, but it doesn't include. Um, so please look at the sidewalks too, besides that. But the mayor has brought up before about, it'd be nice to fill in that ditch there because that's, the kids go from Chandler home along a fence and there's a big deep ditch and they could fall in and hurt themselves. The kids come from Howell and walk in a ditch the other way. Guy Grant never gets put on the, CIP, but it should be considered. It's a busy street. I mean, it's uh, the other side, it's four lanes. Um, there's two other things that I'd like to bring up, and one is the residential street maintenance plan. You need to revisit it. It was, uh, it's great that you came up with a plan, but it was predicated on growth and borrowing money. And since the, we're in a financial situation where that's not going to happen, we're already behind, so if you could please bring it up and discuss it again, I would appreciate it immensely. Plus, I'd like to talk about potholes a little bit. I know I'm talking about potholes. It, they happen a lot when it rains. Right now, you're pretty well caught up. But when it rains, I call on potholes, and I've called on the same potholes. In fact, I asked the lady, I said, why do I have to keep calling on the same pothole? I said, do you keep track of them? And she said, no. Well, I would think that you should keep track of them, uh, please. The last thing I want to talk about is Placido Benavides. 
I think Plaza Benavides needs to be built. I don't think this is the time. I think there's other streets in the city that should be taken care of first. An example, and we're talking about schools, Crestwood doesn't have sidewalks all the way down it to where there's a school. It has some by the school, and, and then they miss, and then there's none on the other side. So please, you know, it needs to be built eventually, but is now the right time? Thank you. This is communication still open. If anybody would like to come forward, now's the time. Seeing no one, we'll close citizens' communication and move into ordinances. The first one does not have a public hearing. That's, that's correct. Item C1 is an ordinance amending Chapter 24 to address the city secretary administered fees in Section 24-21 regarding a tenement vendor relocation fees, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for publication and codification and savings, and declaring an effective date. Make a motion to approve Item C1. Second. Motion in a second. Is there any question? Question? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Two. Item C2 is an ordinance vacating, closing, and abandoning an alley in accordance with Section 20-12 of the Victoria Code, retaining an easement for utilities and declaring an effective date. So now we do have a public oh. hearing. I'm sorry. Let's just open the public hearing. On C2, if anyone would like to speak to that item specifically, now would be the time. I don't think there's anyone here to speak on that. So we'll close public hearing on C2, and I'll entertain a motion. Move we adopt. Second. Second. Y'all got a copy of the petition. Anybody know what the original purpose of that alley was? That property, that subdivision was platted in the 50s. And there are alleys all along that section of uh, Laurent, one block off of, L excuse me, I said Laurent, off of Navarro. I don't know what the purpose of those alleys were. They used to pick the trash up in the alleys. When I was growing up, that's where the, the you would put your trash in the alley and the trucks would go through the alley. This only is, uh, there's three property owners involved. All three agreed. So just as a reminder, uh, and then the property, the, the usage of the surface area is split between them, correct? Right. Between the three? Right. That section of code 20-12 that's referred to in the ordinance um, says that if 100% of the property owners request through a written <laughs> petition that we abandon an alleyway, uh, that's 100% of the adjoining property owners within that block, then the city will, it's a mandatory, the city will abandon that. And then state law takes over and it gets split right down the middle and divided among the people on each side. Because I, I, the reason I make that clear is we occasionally have people who want to do that, but if there's six or eight property owners and just one of them says no, we can't do it, and it's not our issue, it's the property owners themselves. Because we have had some people around town that want to do this. Can't, so, okay. Do we have a motion and a second? Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. <clears throat> C3. C3 is an ordinance amending Chapter 14 to create an exception for itinerant vendor permit requirements in certain city parks, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for publication, codification, and savings, and declaring an effective date. We have a public hearing on this item. Uh, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing on C3 if anyone would like to speak to that. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. I'll entertain a motion on C3. Make a motion to approve item C3. Second. Okay, motion and a second. And this, the language is clarifying what we spoke to last week. Mm -hmm. I guess everybody saw that. That's right. No further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay, that item passes. Consent agenda. There are 10 items on the consent agenda tonight, which will be approved by a single vote. They are first, <laughs> the approval of minutes of the regular meeting of October 4th, 2016. Second, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a community development block grant programmatic agreement with the Salvation Army, a Georgia corporation doing business as the Salvation Army unit in Texas, regarding a public facilities improvement program in the amount of $46,875 and declaring an effective date. 
Third is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute all documents <coughs> necessary for the annual software license and maintenance agreement of the SAP software system in the amount of $52,618.26, covering the 2017 calendar year and declaring an effective date. Fourth is a resolution approving the purchase of uniforms and outerwear for fire department employees in an estimated amount not to exceed $53,950 via a government cooperative contract from Gauls LLC, authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary very effective date. Fifth is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a technical support agreement for service and support of the fire department's Lucas CPR machines with Video Control Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $26,601 and declaring an effective date. Sixth is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a real estate professional services agreement with South Texas Zoological Society Incorporated for management of the Texas Zoo in the amount of $125,000 and declaring an effective date. Seventh is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a renewal agreement with Baker and Taylor Book Leasing System to provide Victoria Public Library with leased books in the amount of $29,755.74 and declaring an effective date. Eighth is a resolution approving the purchase of a mowing equipment package from professional turf products via a governmental cooperative contract in the amount of $219,317.14, authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to complete the purchase. Ninth is a resolution approving the purchase of ammunition to be used by the police department from GT Distributors by a government cooperative contract in the amount of $54,356, authorizing the city manager to execute all documents necessary to complete the purchase and declaring an effective date. And tenth is a resolution authorizing the city manager to renew the 2014-15 grounds maintenance and mowing contracts of the city of Victoria properties with Scott Bauer doing business as Scott Bauer's lawn service in the amount of $93,640. Kevin Stewart doing business as ground effects in the amount of $84,979 and Lawn Star Yard Care LLC in the amount of $8,645 and declaring an effective date. A motion to approve items D1 through D10 as presented. Second. I, I need to make an amendment. Oh. Can I do it? How There's some I'll... numbers that are wrong in here. I just wanted to tell you. We would need to make. We would need to pull one from the consent agenda and deal with it individually. I don't mind. Uh, which one? It's D two. Okay, um, Council. Do y'all have a problem with voting on D one through ten, or excluding two for now? Y'all, y'all okay with all that? I send my motion and make a motion to approve items D one, D three through D ten. <clears throat> Second. Second. Okay, um, so we have a motion for D1 and then D3. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, so D2 separately. We're only going to give you, we'll give you a coupon to do this just one time. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to, you know, okay. go, but I, I'm, I'm kidding. It's all okay. right. You want to get your questions in. Okay. For the benefit of the public so they know which one we're talking about, this is the resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a community development block grant with the Salvation Army. Yes. <clears throat> so we, let's get a motion on D2. Make a motion to approve item D2. Second. Second. Okay. Now we can, what's your question? Okay. Correction. Uh, the exhibit A has the figure of 43,140. The resolution has 46,875. And the amount of expenditure on the CM1 is 43,140, but up there on the uh, topic of council items is 46,875. So which is it? Jared. Honestly, I don't have that detail with me to know. I do see the, the conflicts you're pointing out there. Uh, 46,875 is what I vaguely remember being the amount that was in the approved uh, one-year action plan. Yeah, because I forgot to look it up. I was going to do it. Yeah, I don't, and I don't, I don't have that with me to, to <clears throat> verify. It could be that one is the amount that was in the action plan and the other is the actual bid amount that came in. Okay, because the agreement says 43140, and I'd hate to, you know, tell them at the, the end. quotes for 43140 from BMC signs, so I would say 43140. Sean, do you want to hand your 
iPad to Jared and let him see that. Well, what I was looking Thank for you. is the actual consolidated plan. Oh, okay, so, I got you. you know, if the bid amount is okay. 43140, that's probably the right amount. I think the confusion there is is staff stuck okay. the 46875, which was probably the original estimate from this past spring, and and what is is inside the the approved action plan. But if the bid says 43140, then that's the amount. Okay. That the contract. Need to do this for. tonight. I mean, we don't. Want we to don't to have to do it tonight. Does. If, I think we ought to table it. We can. Let's. So there, there was a suggestion from about tabling it. We you don't have to do it. Just bring it back corrected next time. Mm -hmm. sure. So we have a motion in a second. How do we? What do we need to do? A motion to table. A motion to table item D two until next meeting. Second. Okay. That's all we need. That's right. A motion yeah. to second and a vote on the. We do vote on a motion to. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of tabling the item to the next meeting, say aye. Aye. Oh, same sign. Okay, that was a yes vote, Mr. No, I, so now you, I think we ought to just change it to 43-140 and go. Okay, well, we voted, so we have what we need. Yes. Got that, Ms. Scarlett? Okay. Thank you for catching that. All right. Resolutions, E1. E1 is a resolution appointing a new member to the Planning Commission to fill an unexpired term and declare an effective date. Here in council, this is, as we've done in the past, a resolution with a blank that we need to fill in before we take a vote. We have one, two, three, four applications in our packet. That's correct. You're ready to vote, so we just go through and everybody write one name. You're getting good. You, you got my instructions down. All right. I like that. <laughs> and as always, this is uh, all public information. If anybody wants to come get these ballots later and look at them, they can. Do you know which step you forgot? Don't forget to put a number one at the top of your ballots in case we have to do a, a runoff. <laughs> you put your I name in the blank. You didn't that. forget. Okay. And then you can simply circle the name that you are nominating to put in the blank. You can pass the ballots back to me. Scarlett and I will compile the votes. None of the candidates are here, I don't believe. Four choices. Really good choices, as always. I just, I really appreciate it. it. Makes it hard for us. These are some very qualified candidates, and I'm very thankful that they take the time to apply for these positions. That is not a majority vote. That is a uh, two votes for um, Philip Johns, one vote for Mark Pullen, one vote for Gail um, Hode. I'm sorry, I'm looking at two sheets here, and one vote for Stephen Kidder. So, Mayor and Council, it's up to you guys if you want to go through and vote for who's going to be on the second place name in order to, or or you can, as you've done in the past, choose to uh, nominate Philip Johns, even though there's not been a majority. Have any heartburn about any of it? We can we can take those three that got the one vote and vote on those three if y'all want. Prepared to do that? I'm, I've got enough ballots to do that. They, in the past, council members had indicated that you wanted to nominate by a majority vote rather than a plurality. In order to do that, what we would need to do now is we would need to have a runoff between the second, third, and fourth place vote getters in order to determine the second name to go on the ballot in order to have a runoff in order to determine a majority between Philip Johns and whoever comes in second. Let's do that. Yep, we should stick to the... Yeah, let's All right. Do that. We should stick to the... Write a two up in the corner. Put a two in the corner. That's why we put a number one. And so now you're choosing between only Mark Pullen, Gail Hode, or Stephen Kidder. Any one of those names. 
first three. If you'll allow me a little levity, I hope this isn't a preview of what we're going to have in our national election, because now we have a two-way tie between Mark and Gail. So in order to continue this process, we now need to have a runoff between Mark and Gail, and we're still trying to determine the second name to go on the ballot in a runoff election against Philip. So this is now ballot number three. Oh, I'm sorry. He asked how many votes did each of them get in order to figure out how we wound up with a tie. That was two votes for Mark, two votes for Gail, and one vote for Stephen Kidder. So this is ballot number three now. So our choices now are? Same three. Between Mark and Gail. Mark and Gail, number one and number three on the list. Okay. <clears throat> so that was three votes for Mark Pullen and two votes for Gail Hode, which means that now we have two names to put on the final runoff ballot between Mark Pullen and Philip Johns, right? So this is Potentially, I wrote on that one, let me scratch it. <clears throat> Potentially the final ballot. So well, this is four votes and there were four people in the... <laughs> That's right. That's right. So this is the fourth ballot. We have to put up number four at the top, put your name on it again. And the two names, Colin and Gail Hope. No, no, Mark Pullen and Philip. Mark Pullen and Philip Johns. Mark Pullen and Philip Johns. One and four. One or four on your ballot. One of those two. That is a four to one vote in favor of Philip Johns. So now we can fill in the blank on the resolution with the name Philip Johns and have a motion to approve the motion uh, to approve the resolution. Do you need to read it or just no, nothing to read? Make a motion to approve item E1 appointing Philip, Philip Johns to the Planning Commission. Second. <clears throat> we have a motion and second. Surely there is no discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Thank you. You need a break? Mr. No, I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> E2. E2 is a resolution ratifying the city manager's action to amend a preservation incentive program grant agreement with Edward and Valerie Wright for a project consistent with the city's preservation incentive program to extend the term of the contract from September 4th to December 31st, 2016 and declare an effective date. Make a motion to approve item E2. Second. Second. Is there discussion? And all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. All right, ayes have it. Three. Three is a resolution ratifying the programs and expenditures included in the Victoria Sales Tax Development Corporation's fiscal year 2016-17 budget and declaring an effective date. Council, we have a motion. Second. And a second. Everything's in the packet for you. I do want to recognize our president of the sales tax board, Mr. Nice, is here, former council member. This has been thoroughly vetted, discussed at the sales tax board. 
Any questions? Not everyone is set on the Sales Tax Development Corporation Board either. Explanation and all to have run down on. Sure. He's very prepared. Just okay. for the yep. public audience, television, and for the council members that weren't attended. Thank you. Um, the project that uh, city manager asked me to, to talk about this evening is, um, the, of course, the Placido Benavides Drive extension project, which will extend that street, um, formerly known as Glasgow Street, <clears throat> from the current dead end there between Walmart and Lowe's to the east and curving down to the southeast across Larkspur next to Ethel E. Tracy Park and then down to Salem Road as a two-lane curb concrete street with utilities project also includes the rehabilitation of Salem Road from that intersection to uh, Zach Lentz Parkway uh, as a two-lane open-ditch asphalt road with utilities. Uh, I want to talk about the, the need for uh, and the importance of this project. Um, we have a significant traffic congestion problem uh, at, on North Navarro, particularly uh, north of Zach Lentz Parkway. We have traffic counts there approaching 40,000 vehicles a day. Uh, in our most recent intersection uh, traffic counts or volume counts, uh, we had over 61,000 vehicles passing through that intersection uh, per day. What we have is a capacity problem, uh, and everything that can be done to resolve that problem or to increase capacity has been done. Uh, when a thoroughfare has been widened to its ultimate number of lanes, which this one has, uh, medians have been installed and your traffic signals have been timed and synchronized to the extent that they can be. Um, the only way to reduce congestion is pr to provide alternative routes. And that's what this proposed project uh, is intended to do. Uh, is to create an alternative route and improve circulation around our most heavily developed retail corridor. Uh, the route provides several benefits. Uh, one, it improves access to the retail corridor. Uh, if a resident lives on the east side of town, uh, for example, along John Stockbauer Drive between Colony Creek and, and say, Windcrest, or really that entire east side, uh, this route provides convenient access to Walmart, Sam's, um, Lowe's, Academy, and Coles, really that entire corridor, while allowing that resident to, resident to avoid the congestion at that uh, busy intersection at, at the, the Loop and, and uh, Navarro. It also improves circulation around the corridor, uh, around our retail core. Um, we're, we're starting to see development happening on the north side of Sacklands Parkway between the mall and Salem Road. Uh, this route will further support uh, commercial and retail development in that area, providing a circular route for shoppers to uh, reach, uh, to travel from one side of that shopping corridor to the other without having to cut through the Lowe's and Hobby Lobby and mall parking lots to get from one point to the other. <clears throat> the route also uh, provides an alternative for commuters, for residents in living in the north side of town, particularly Northcrest and those other neighborhoods. The route provides an easy connection to Salem at 463 for those commuting to places of employment on the east side of town, southeast, uh, or the plants located on, uh, south of Victoria. Based on traffic modeling provided by Civil Corps, it's projected that the new street will carry 3,500 vehicles per day in the, the initial year of operation. This result, results in significant reductions in turning movements uh, at Navarro and Zach Lentz, which will relieve traffic congestion in the area. Uh, we also believe that 3,500 is a conservative number. Uh, to give you a, a couple more details on those, those traffic numbers, we're looking at a 35% reduction in left turns for southbound Navarro at 463, a 24% reduction in right turns for westbound Zach Lentz Parkway at Navarro, and a 45% reduction in right turns for eastbound Glasgow at Navarro. So we're talking about a significant, a significant number of cars that won't be traveling through that, through that uh, busy corridor. The project also has uh, economic development and land development benefits, opening up several hundred acres of land for development in a des desirable location. Um, and, and kind of our primary point that we want to make is whether lo where the local econ economy is booming or if it's stagnant, cities need to be visionary. Uh, we can't wait for an economic boom 
uh, boom to put the infrastructure in place uh, to accord, uh, accommodate our anticipated growth. Uh, in reality, uh, I have some new numbers for you. Our commercial and retail development activity has not fallen off this year, uh, although new housing starts are certainly down. We permitted $87.5 million uh, in total construction value in the fiscal year 2016. Uh, that's up almost $20 million more than we did in the previous fiscal year, and the great majority of that $87.5 million is in commercial uh, construction. <clears throat> the Menavitas extension is a critical infrastructure investment, both in terms of reducing traffic congestion and protecting and improving the economic health of a retail corridor that generates a significant portion of our sales tax revenue. Uh, we've been discussing the need for this project for over 10 years, and it's been identified in the CIP since 2012. Uh, and of course, you know, design is substantially complete and right-of-way acquisition is currently underway. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to address them at this point. Council? Of course, that's just the one major big expenditure in the sales tax budget. <clears throat> Thank you. Significant. Um, that it's been over 10 years it's been in discussion. I almost say it's like 15. Because I remember it's just some point we have to go forward and you all know what the congestion is like in front of the mall and when we did the master plan that came up considerably if I remember by on citizens one, who yeah. participated in the planning process planning about that so. on the number one complaint when you talked about traffic yeah yeah additionally um, there are many people would like to be in that retail corridor along the barrel there is no land to be had just just out this would allow for additional land adjacent to Walmart, which is where the mall is. So it does have a great potential to be an additional retail corridor as well, just because of the lack of alternatives. I don't think it, and it certainly won't impair, you know, there's always a good debate to be had, and we certainly had it. I've had it for a long time now about doing, uh, you know, foregoing needs. We have needs, Red River, Crestwood. Those are all still on the plan. They're all going to be, you know, our CIP, they're there. Funding is being arranged and watched carefully. You know, obviously we might have to shift a few things around. It does not impact or impair our plans to continue to do those streets. They're there. They're going to be let within the time frame we expect, and so I see no problem there either. That's what I think you would all agree. And we'll see the CIP list in April. Uh, we're probably going to bring that back in February. Good. I look um, forward to that talk. It's always a good discussion. One of the good things that I wanted to point out also is that this is the last year that we're paying on our debt service also. So next year we'll have hopefully that money to put somewhere else. The debt service for the uh, athletic for the, fields? Yeah. Yes, sir. Youth sports complex. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I had a talk with Mr. Nice about that today. So hopefully we can discuss about maybe saving some of that back for a few years. Right development but that'll be another discussion nice to pay it off though oh yes it is it is kind of like paying off your house your car yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and considering that, that our parks director uh over 2,000 hotel rooms 2,300 rooms i believe and athletic related you know so i know the hotelers love that those ball fields and everybody so very good are there other questions about e3 any further mm -hmm. discussion not all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you. Item E4 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute the second amendment to the contribution and native construction agreement with the YMCA of the Golden Crescent Incorporated to revise the payment schedule for the construction of a swimming pool and declaring an effective day. Make a motion approve E4. Second. second. Motion is second. Are there any questions? Ma'am, Ms. Elise. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make that final payment plus and then what would have been paid after it was completed. So now we're going to pay it all off before completed. No, ma'am. Uh, we will not pay it off until it is completed. Once they complete it and they um, send us notice that it's been complete, then we inspect to make sure it's been complete, and then we'll make that final payment. So, and, and which they anticipate that to be sometime during the fall, uh, but we 
did extend the contract till April. So if for some reason he does not open that pool up in April as promised, then they will have to pay us back the five hundred thousand okay. dollars. That's the clawback there. But no, ma'am, it we won't pay that until it's completed. It just will not be the, open. The schedule one through four doesn't change there, the payments. Yeah. That doesn't change. That's correct. I, I would add that I, I, I do not anticipate any problems with mm -hmm. them getting it done by April, and I'm sure that the clawback, you know, is just there just for protecting ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if he had some sort of major problem, he'll come back to us and we'll talk again. Sure. We No one wants to delay it, but we certainly don't want to penalize the Y. They've been a great partner in this process. So you're you're on this board. No, I used to be. Used to be, okay. But I talked to them today, and because uh, I thought there was some confusion in the paper that we were moving it one day from April the 29th, and um, sorry about yes, that. He'll be ready, you know, in November. But there's just absolutely no reason to open a pool in November. To the True. Public. And, and, you know, we had uh, these conversations with Chris before, at the Y before we even started doing this. But under the old amendment, we would have been obligated to pay before the pool was completed because it was set up to be completed right, in correct. July. And that's why we needed to make sure the dates were good. So. Okay, just wanted to make sure. All righty. Very good. Any, any further questions? Not all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. One city manager report. Yes, and it's, um, you know, always pleased to do this. And Gilbert's sitting here and Andrew's sitting here. I don't see any of his other staff here tonight. But to receive uh, recognition from the uh, Government Finance Officers Association, it's our 34th year to be recognized for our Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Uh, and I know, you know, we say, wow, uh, one more time, but it just, to me, yes, it is one more time, but it's great because it proves that we are doing what's above the minimum required on financial reporting so our citizens can understand the financial reports that we pr produce in our CAFR. So, but uh, Gilbert, thank you for all your hard work. It's not something we have to do, but we've chosen to do it through the years. Uh, and Andrew, thank you, too. So, and please tell Billy and Laura, thank you. Always well deserved. Good job. So y'all got a, an award a while back was the procurement. Uh huh. See, I, I, in all honesty, and I'll bet council feels the same. I get a little confused at times. It's like every quarter you're getting an award, but they're different <laughs> ones. But yes. anyway, but well deserved. Mm -hmm. We appreciate what y'all do. So, <clears throat> okay, we do not have a work session. We do have one executive session, a sh brief one mm -hmm. that we could handle next door. Yes, if y'all agree, mm -hmm. that's fine. We'll. Uh, We'll uh, excuse ourselves to executive session. Sure. The City Council will recess for executive session on the 18th day of October 2016 at 538 p.m. The subject matter of the executive session deliberation is as follows. Texas Government Code Section 551.074 with regard to personnel matters, including but not limited to the appointment of the municipal court judge. Thank you. There won't be any announcement after. <laughs>